Welcome home, brave heroes. I'm Ash, this is Ash Quest, and today we're going to be taking a look at something a little less heroic, a little more pioneering. This is Klaus Tuber's Catan, the dice game, and I apologize for probably butchering three-fifths of that title. But I got this at $5 at my five below, thinking what a low price to pay for these really awesome D6. They have intricate designs, they have lovely colors, they're engraved, and I can use them for a homebrew gathering resource system. And friends, that will still happen. However, what a surprise hit of the month. This game is very simple to learn. It is addictive. It's easy to play several times in a single session. And even my wife found it a lot of fun and stayed up late trying to beat my high score, which she did. And now it's been quite an endeavor trying to get that title back. So without further ado, let's unbox Klaus Tuber's Catan. Catan? Katan, Katan, the dice game. This game comes with everything you need to play it right out of the box, right away. The only thing you don't have is a sort of dice tray to roll everything in, but I guess you could use the tray itself and do exactly that. We have 6d6 aforementioned with six different resources, including wheat, bricks, gold, lumber, ore, and wool. A lot of you may already find some ways to use these symbols and these resources as homebrew for another game. But today we're going to learn how to play this properly and we're going to play a solo round. This comes with a pad of double-sided sheets and you can play the game normally using Island 1 solo or you can play against another player competitively with the back using Island 2. I actually don't prefer Island 2. I think playing Island 1 and just trying to see who can beat each other's high score more consistently is the more fun option, but to each their own. In Katane, the dice game, you're able to roll your resource dice up to three times per round. You can keep whichever resources you think will be the most useful and re-roll whatever you don't like. You can continue doing this until you've put aside all of the resources you think will be useful for the round, and then you will score. Each round, you'll follow along this track or branch out where you deem fit to score points for building the different buildings along the map. Now this very simple map is the same on every page and you'll begin to see why it's arranged in such a way, it's almost in order of difficulty. But despite the RNG nature of rolling the dice, the ability to retain certain dice in order to strategize and figure out what you're going to keep and what you're going to try to build, well, it adds a lot more autonomy and control over the way that you play. Now, the game is played in a finite set of rounds. You only have this many rounds until your game is done, and then you'll add up your points, putting your points in each box each round. Your resource dice will combine to build the different buildings, of which there are four. Roads, knights, settlements, and cities. We start round one right here on this road, and it connects to the very first settlement. The settlement is worth three points. The road just beyond the settlement is worth one, and the knight in the mountains around which the road is traveling is worth one point. We can build any of these three things. We can build the roads because we're actually allowed to continue along building the roads even if we don't build the settlements or cities in between or around them. Nothing will block our never-ending road. But we can only build those cities, settlements, and knights that our roads are adjacent to. It might be easier for me to go ahead and play around to show you what I mean. So we take all six of the dice and roll. For my first roll, I've got two wool, a grain, an ore, a brick, and a lumber, and it takes a brick and a lumber to build a road. So I could easily build this road. I'll go ahead and set these dice aside and get ready to roll my second roll. Actually, no, I won't because I can easily take my wool, my grain, and my ore, and that will help me build the knight. So no matter what I roll with this last dice, even if I roll it and get any of the six results, I'm not going to have enough resources left to build anything here. So I'm going to go ahead and just set these two buildings as what I'm going to score for this round, and that's going to be the road and the knight. So I'm going to fill in the road, and I'm going to fill in the knight, kind of trying to decide if I want to fill him in or put a check mark. I'm going to add those two scores together, and now I have two points for the very first round. The first round is done. I'm ready to start rolling for the second round. Now, before I explain what these symbols are, these resource markers underneath the knights all around the map, I'm going to go ahead and go into my second round. So let's go ahead and begin round two, and we can begin round two by just rolling. 
And would you look at that? This is actually a pretty fantastic first roll. If I had built this road, I would be adjacent to this city. And a city costs three ore and two wheat, which is pretty difficult to get because it's five different resources that you need. However, I've got two of the ore and two of the wheat. So if I wanted to hold those back and reroll these two dice, I'd have a pretty good chance maybe of getting that last ore. But it doesn't matter because I need to have this road built first before I can access the city. I'm not adjacent to the city, so I can't build it. I also can't build this settlement down here. The only things at this point that I can build are one of these roads and this settlement because those are the only things that I'm adjacent to. So I'm not going to keep any of that roll and I'll go ahead and roll again. We have to be very careful though. We have to make sure that we do score something in each round because if you don't, you'll actually end up putting a minus two rather than a zero for each round in which you don't score. You'll actually lose points if you don't commit to trying to score something. Okay, for this second round, it's pretty serendipitous. Uh, once again, I have three ore and one of the wheat, and that's actually almost everything, four-fifths, once again, to get the city. But I can't get the city even if I did roll all of the right dice because I'm not adjacent to it. So I'm actually pretty cursed. The dice are taunting me at this time. I do have enough to make a knight. I've got the ore, the wheat, and the wool, which is exactly what is required to make a knight, but I am not adjacent to the tile on which the second knight is present, and I can't build this knight over again. I've already built him. However, all is not lost. I'm going to take one of these ore dice and set them aside and roll one more time. All right, this time I have succeeded in rolling logs and brick, lumber and brick, and that is what I need in order to make another road. So, I'll go ahead and do that and fill in the road, and so that will mean that I've earned at least one point. But you can go on making buildings with resources that you have as long as you have enough resources to keep doing it. I don't appear to have any more resources that would be able to combine into buildings to which I am adjacent. However, this is where resource jokers come into play. Under each knight, if you have built that knight, you can use the resource underneath it as a joker and cause it to represent any other resources that you'd like. You can only do this once per knight that you build. So essentially, you're only able to do this six times in a game. And we can only use the ore as a resource joker this one time. So to do that, we simply cross off the ore in the resource joker spot and we take our ore and we just turn it into wood and now we have another wood and brick combination for our third roll with both of these being valid combinations i can go ahead and grab this other road which means i'm now adjacent to two settlements and a city and another knight and if i build this knight i'll be able to use the wheat as a resource joker so we're going to go ahead and tally up our score which is two in this instance and move on to round three. Round three, one good roll, and we have enough for yet another road. I haven't explained gold yet. Gold is actually not a resource that is used to directly build any of the buildings. It doesn't build any of the knights or roads, cities or settlements. However, gold can be used somewhat as a joker. What you can do is set gold aside if you roll just one like I did and hope to roll a second gold. Because if you do roll a second gold, and here I actually rolled two you can spend spend two of your gold to change them into any one resource so we are trading two for one here but with these two gold i'll go ahead and change them into a brick resource so that i can use this log and this brick once again giving me two roads for round three so i'll go ahead and fill in the two roads that i have built and i'll put my score down at this point we have access to a lot of higher scoring things here but everything that you see on this map must be built in sequence i cannot simply build roads until i get to the very last settlement and then build that settlement for the 11 points i actually have to build the settlements in sequence so before I build a settlement on here at all, I have to first build this settlement, the three-point score settlement. I can't build any of the cities until I have built this city, scoring seven points, and so on. And you can't build the knights unless you do so in succession. So it's time to get serious for our fourth round and try to build something that scores a little bit higher and allows us to start progressing with our sequence of buildings. So we're going to try for the settlement 
and get brick, wood, wool, and wheat. And I got almost none of that <laughs> except for the wood. And I'll put the wood aside. And instead of trying to spend this gold, I'm going to try to just roll those dice and hopefully each one will give me more of a chance to get the thing that I need. I guess for this round two, I'll set them aside, but not spend them just yet. And so that's kind of a that's kind of how the risk aspect of this game is played. Well, I got bricks, so I'm going to set the bricks with the lumber and I'll be able to build a roll a road. And in that way, I won't lose any points this round, but I'll go ahead and roll all four of the dice and just hope for the best. And it looks like we have another gold, a brick. We can almost make what we need here uh, with our wheat. We have everything we need to make the settlement except for the sheep, the wool. And I don't have what it takes to turn the gold into wool because I would need to have two gold out here active. I should have held one back, but that's how you play. That's the risk you take. So that's just one point scored for our next round because I went ahead and used these to build a road. That's what I'm deciding to do. So we're building the road right there. And on to round five. Again, got to get serious. Looks like I have exactly here what I need uh, to get three fifths of a city done. And I can build the city because I built the road adjacent to it. So I'm going to target this city next. That's what I'm going to do. Second roll. I have another ore and I hope, I really, really hope with this third roll, I'll be able to score my last ore. Got a one in six chance on two dice. Didn't happen. I got brick, I got ore, and I got wheat. And I don't think that it's possible for me to make anything with any of these in any combination. So that means I actually score minus two for not having any any points this round. And that's how you play the Catan dice game. Just going along, trying to score uh, the right combinations of things pushing your luck, trying to figure out what you're going to hold back. Is the risk worth the reward? You can play conservatively and never lose points. You can just build roads till the cows come home, uh, or you can try to push your luck and build the high value buildings as soon as possible to get access to the higher value buildings. It's really, really hard to get to this 30 point city before you're all out of rounds or this 11 point settlement but I assume it can be done if your rolls are lucky enough. This last knight on the map, if you follow them in sequence doing this, has a question mark underneath him, and that means you can use whatever die you want as a joker, a resource joker, one time for one die in one round. And it'll likely be the last round, so you're probably going to be gambling on getting either this 30-point city or this 11 point settlement. So this was the first roll that I did playing our round six now. And I'll go ahead and put these off to the side and build the knight. So that's going to be my guaranteed build. I'm building the knight here in the second hex and just rolling. Probably going to go ahead and grab the resources needed to make another road because why not? And so that's it. I'm scoring the knight who's worth two points and the road worth one point, and that's three points. So we'll just go right on ahead into the next round. I'm not even going to roll any more for that round. This time, this time I'd really like to build this settlement, and that's going to take lumber, it's going to take wool, it's going to take wheat and brick. Let's hope we can score a wheat or a brick. There's my wheat. And I'm going to go ahead and put this wheat aside as well. And you'll see why here in just a second. I did not score the brick in my third roll. So this would all be a wash. But I held on to this, this other wheat that I rolled just in case I didn't roll any more wheats. That is going to be my resource joker this round. So I'm using my wheat resource joker so that I can turn this into a brick. And now with this combination of dice matching what I need to build a settlement, I can score my three points. And that settlement's done. Okay, next round. Sheep, gold, and wheat. Very cool combination, but I don't think it's very useful. We're going to try to build the next settlement, I think. The difficulty curve here is that the settlement and the city don't share any resources except wheat. And you can't really try for both or get it to where you're going to set aside dice and hopefully it'll be just for either one. You can't do that unless you're going to set aside one of your wheat and then hope that you're very, very lucky in your next uh, two rolls. I'm going to exchange both of these gold and make them into an ore. And I'll go ahead and take the ore. wheat and sheep 
and I'll make that into a knight. And we'll go ahead and roll our second one. I spent one of those, spent one of those for the, uh, for the, for the ore. So I can't use that one again, but we have ore and brick. And I'll go ahead and re-roll this dice just for giggles. If it turns into a lumber, I'll go ahead and build a city. It's not lumber, so I'm going to use my wool, my ore, and my wheat to build the third knight on the board, scoring me three points. And we'll head into the next round, starting fresh from roll one. If only I needed all of this brick, but I do not need all of this brick. I'll take these ores and set them aside. I'll take this sheep, which could be used as a wild a resource joker and set it aside and roll these again. Hopefully getting something of use, not really getting anything of use. Uh, sadly, if I were going to try for one of the cities, I would at this point judge that my last roll is highly unlikely, too unlikely, I think, to risk trying to get a city. And so if I go for a settlement, that's going to be brick, wool, wheat, lumber. I can do the wool, I can do the lumber, but I need wheat. So I'm going to set this gold aside and roll my final round, hoping to get a brick here. I got two gold and I got a sheep. Uh, so this is what's going to have to happen. I'm going to spend my two gold to get the bricks. And then the third gold is useless. I can't do anything with that. I'm going to use my sheep or wool resource joker to turn that into wheat. And with this combination of dice, I will score four points because I'm able to claim build to this next settlement. So four points total for this round. Let's go on to the next round. Next round, we're just rolling. We don't have to declare what we're doing. We're just rolling to see what we get. At this point, I would really love to build one of these cities, uh, but I don't think we can try for it because we just don't really have anything that we need to build a city. So I'll go ahead and put these two logs off to the side. If I roll bricks, I'll roll more roads at the very least. I cannot believe I did not roll anything for roads. But if I go ahead and set this ore and wheat aside, maybe I'll get a sheep in the very next turn. And I'll go ahead and set that gold aside in case I don't so that I can just use the gold. And well, I was planning on building a knight, but I'm actually not adjacent to the next knight. So I can't do that. Uh, as far as I know, I'm going to have to back off. Let's see. What if instead I try to build a city? I'll go ahead and keep the wheat. I'll keep the gold. I hope to roll a sheep. That's wool, lumber, or brick. Any two of these three in the next roll. And I did. I rolled wool and lumber. And I can go ahead and use my gold to turn this into brick. And that is going to score my points for the very next round. Uh, that's five points for this settlement five points. We only have five rounds left to go, but the next settlement I score will be even more. However, I can't score that until I build the road to get there and I have the lumber and bricks to do so. I'll set some gold aside. Actually, I'll just go ahead and end this round. I'll say that the gold, I'm going to turn that into bricks and uh, that leaves me with only one die left to roll. That's not going to get me anything, but this here is two roads. So we'll go ahead and fill in both of these roads. And now I'm adjacent to this knight, and I'll be able to try to build that settlement next. That's two points for this round. Going to the one after, four rounds left. Let's begin fourth from the last. That was a really good roll. Really, really good. Reminded me of uh, the ending of Inception. Okay, so we have two wheat and one ore, and we've actually got... I'm going to go ahead and try for a city. I'm going to try for a city. I might not do it. That's one there, but I'm going to try for it. Hope I can do it. And I couldn't do it. It was not enough. All I needed was one more ore. I don't have another knight built. I can't use a resource joker and I didn't roll two gold. So this round I lose two points. Gonna go ahead and do it again though. I'll try for this, this city because it can be worth a lot of points to build a city. Here's three out of the five dice that I need. Two wheats and an ore. Go ahead and roll these three. Uh, didn't get anything there. Gonna roll them again. Hopefully I get two ores. I only get one. I got a lot more wheat this time, but that is another risk that went completely south. You know what though? I'm committed. The most amount of points I can get is going to be either from this city or I guess this settlement actually, since I went that route. So the settlement would be worth getting. A settlement is brick, wood, 
wool, wheat, and wouldn't you know it, I have everything but the wood. I'll go ahead and say in my second roll, or maybe my third roll, actually, I'll probably get the wood. And I did. Uh, it was possible that I, I might not have, but I did. And that scored me seven points. So it's time to play the very last round of our game of Catan, the dice game. And we're going to try for, I'm going to say screw it. I'm going to try once again for city. Or night. Or night. Or night. Four points if I can get that night. Probably not going to be able to get a city with these terrible, terrible rolls. Not unless I roll everything all at once and just put all my chips in this one, this, this, on, the, on this one card roll spin. All my chips on this number. Did I get anything? I did make a, I did make a road. I was able to make a road. But um, other than that, I was not able to make anything else of value. So with the road being done, that's one point. And now I can tally up my score. And my total score is 29. Because I had three spots on here that were minus two points. I had a total of 35 points if you didn't count those. But honestly, it's okay. 29 is probably the worst that I've scored so far. Uh, the first time I played, it was something around 50 points. And my wife and I have been able to score up to 60 and 70, playing very seriously and contemplating each move very carefully within the limitation of the number of rounds. Anyway, that is Catan the Dice Game. This pad's all filled out, but I could easily see people homebrewing their own modifications to this and having even more building types to create that would require other combinations of dice like i don't know you could build a prison or you could build a garrison or you could make purchases to build statues of your leaders or of your gods or temples maybe maybe this is more the combination for something like that but i would rather keep gold in the spend and use as wild cards sort of rotation rather than a part of the resource requirements rotation anyway guys i hope you got some inspiration from this or found it amusing or educational you'll probably be able to develop your own homebrew systems and the like just from watching this but having these in your hand and strategizing will really make you think about different ways you could implement such systems and honestly for five dollars this game wins hands down five out of five ten out of ten it did the unthinkable and it made me actually want to look into playing the board game have you guys played it is it fun should i get it lots of expansions for it i noticed i thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next episode and until then onward brave pioneers